This video accompanies uh, chapter 2 and we're going to begin on page 2.4. I highly recommend that for each chapter you actually do the second um, item, the one that's on page 2.4. In other words, restore the chapter 2 data file that comes with the computer accounting with QuickBooks. The advantage of this is that if you made a mistake in the previous chapter, the mistake will not carry forward to the next chapter. So we're in chapter 2, so I'm going to go ahead and open and restore an existing company. And I'm going to go ahead and restore a backup copy next. It's local. You should have already gotten it off of your um, uh, CD or out of the doc sharing area. I'm going to go ahead and choose the Chapter 2 data file and click Next. I'm going to give it a name for myself. In this case, I'm going to name it Dugan Chapter 2. You can name it whatever you want. That's staying on your own hard drive. And, of course, you should have a folder that you're going to keep all your QuickBooks work in. Um, as you go through the um, restore and backup process, it will actually take a minute. I'm going to go ahead and pause. And once it's done, it'll come up with this is the QuickBooks sample file. Simply click OK. And then you should be in the uh, Chapter 2 file. OK, to start with, then on page 2.5, they want us to go in and edit some of the preferences. Oh, our data has been restored. OK. And there's our home page. I'm going to go ahead and close the Accountant Center, maximize the home page, and I should get the icon bar down the left side. If mine came across the top, so I'm going to view it on the left. So my icon bar is over here on the left. So to edit the preferences, I'm going to go ahead and click Edit Preferences. Now the preferences are where everything that I want to be unique to my version of QuickBooks. These are things that um, maybe th that you, you might have set up for um, a particular company or set up for your copy. So anything that's under my preferences is being set up for my all of my QuickBooks, um, different files I might have, but company preferences would be things that would be set up just for one particular company. Um, in this case, they want us to go under General, and under the My Preferences, they want us to go ahead and choose for the default date to be used for new transactions right there in the middle to be the last date entered as the default. So what that means is if I, let's say today is... Um, January 15th, but I'm putting in a number of transactions that happened last week. Rather than using January 15th as my default date, when I put in that first record, um, that first transaction, and I put in January 10th, it means the next transaction will default to January 10th, and the next one will default to January 10th, until finally after I've entered everything for January 10th, and then I change it to January 11th, the next one will default to January 11th. So it'll always use the last date that I entered as the default date for my next record. So I did that under my preferences, so that means that's going to be for every company that I use. This is for my copy of QuickBooks, that's what it's going to do. And then you simply click OK. The next thing that they really do that, that's important in Chapter 2 is all the way up on everything else is important, but that's actually in the QuickBooks software is all the way up on page 2.15, and that is they work with the chart of accounts a little bit. The chart of accounts is located over here in the company pane of the window, and I'm going to go ahead and click on chart of accounts. You can see mine's maximized, and they just want us to display it, and they want to make sure that we are seeing account numbers. And you can see I do see account numbers in mine, but the way you would find that is you'd go under Edit Preferences, similar to what you did before. But this would be a company, oh, but it's not a company preference. Under My Preferences, and we want to check the box, oh, under Accounting, Company Preferences, so that's half right, you want to make sure that the box to use account numbers is checked, and then click OK. Up on page 2.18, they want us to add a new account, and it's a new expense account. So when we're in the chart of accounts, there's a um, some menus or buttons across the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and click the arrow on that account button, and I'm going to choose new. And immediately it'll pop up, and you know this depends whether you're maximized or not. If you're not maximized, it might look like this, but I was maximized, so it covers my full screen. This is an expense account, so make sure you choose expense. The account number we're going to give it is 60400. So I'm going to go ahead and click Continue, and then give it an account number of 60400. The account name they want me to give it is Advertising Expense. 
it is not a sub account. We'll talk more about sub accounts later, but a sub account might be I might have a master account called utilities and then a sub account of water and another one of sewer and another one of gas and another one of electric and another one of telephone and those would all wrap up into the main account. So that's what a sub account is. You can give it a description, but QuickBooks does not require it. Um, you can do some tax line mapping. That's very important if you're going to use any of the um, uh, features to, to um, use the QuickBooks. I believe it's TurboTax that it would tie into. And I'm going to choose Deductions Advertising. And so that's the line that this expense is going to map to on my, um, uh, on my income tax form. And then they want me to go ahead and save and close. And you should then be able to see that new account in here, 60400. See, it's found it and it's selected it. So you can scroll up and down and see you're right in the middle now for advertising expense. Let's say you had something in the chart of accounts that you didn't want to have anymore. Maybe you put it in there by mistake. You usually don't want to get rid of an account that you actually did put some expenses on. But maybe there's you find that there's an account you created, you've never really used it for anything, you've never tied anything to it, so you want to get rid of it. In this case, we want to get rid of 63300. So I'm going to find 63300, printing and reproduction. I'm going to select it by simply clicking on it. Then I'm going to go down to my account down arrow, and I'm going to choose Delete Account. It will ask if I'm sure I want to delete this account, and I simply click OK. And then that account is removed from my chart of accounts. Another thing you, that they show you then on page 2.21 is how to edit an account. So we're going to go back and find that 60400 advertising expense that we created earlier. This time, just to show you a different way to do it, instead of going down to the account button, I'm going to go ahead and right click on it and choose edit account. Notice new and delete are also in that right menu, but this time I want edit account. I previously named it advertising expense. Now I've decided that a better name for this account would be advertising and promotion. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the new name and then save and close. Now I decide that I would like to keep a uh, written uh, a paper copy of my chart of accounts so that I have it um, on file for, for, my, for my archival records. So I'm going to go ahead and come down to reports and that would be the account listing report. Notice it automatically flipped me over to reports and opened the account listing. And if this was one of the reports that I had to turn in for my assignment, I would simply go up to file, save as PDF, give it a name, save it. And after you've um, looked at the report, you can go ahead and close it. You can close the chart of accounts and it should take you back to the home screen.